Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's lesson, we're gonna look into how to do a simple sofa based on the reference picture that's available here. So first of all, we're gonna check the size of the picture because we're gonna import this into Max for modeling. So just right click the picture, Look at here, so this is about square 239 times 238. So we can assume like this is a square picture, so you can put it 400 times 400 pixel, or you know, like 500 times 500, or even 1000 times 1000. And how about the site reference? Look at the details, it's the same. Okay, so let's get straight into 3ds Max. So from the front view, you can just go to here and create a simple plane. Just drag and right click to finish. And go to modify tab. And since we're using it just a reference, we do not need any segments at all. So just right click and right click on the arrows to bring it down to one. And as for here, let's put in you know, like a 500, 500. Okay, so right now the the sofa or the couch that we're gonna model is not going to be following any actual scales. Okay, we're just gonna model according to the reference picture. So I guess like this could be a little bit too big, you know, uh, it's bigger than the, the grid. I, I pref personally prefer to uh, keep it, you know, somewhere around here or just slightly bigger. So maybe that's better let's put it to 200 okay so now let's bring it up above the, the grid and just click alternate W to get into the full screen and so from here we'll like to go into render setup and make sure our render has been switched to scan line and after that, let's go into Material Editor and look for Scanline tab and just drag Standard Legacy into these empty areas. And after that, let's connect this to here by cl clicking and drag and drop to here. And from Diffuse Color, just drag it out, go to General and click Bitmap. And we need to copy this uh, folder path and put it into here and choose the front reference. Now it should show it right away. So if it doesn't show, so maybe you have to go back to here and make sure this is checked. Show shaded material in viewport. And the second thing that we have to be sure is that this is being aligned to the center of the grid. So right now, if I go to front view by clicking F and click F3, so you can see that like this is slightly off. So we can go down to here and just right click on the X value, then it will put it down to zero and click F3. And let's put it right here somewhere close to the grid. Okay, so now Let's push it back. And knowing that the site reference, it's about the same size, okay? Just one pixel difference. So we can use back the same thing. So I'm gonna make a clone, hold shift key and duplicate. And whatever you clone, you can name it as site reference. So this is the front reference. And I'm gonna rotate to the other side of it so I can click E for shortcuts to rotate and click A to turn on angle snap so that whenever we rotate we can get an exact degree so whenever you turn this on if you right click this you can see it shows like each time you drag it changes 5 degree so we can get an exact perfect 90 degrees whenever we rotate according to the numbers. So push it back 
by using move tool here. And now let's create another material from here. So go to here, shift and drag to make a copy, double click this, click this bitmap and change the site reference. And then we can assign to the picture. Okay, so from here, I feel like uh, this is facing the wrong side. So I prefer it to face to the, the, the left side. So I can fix it by just go to UVs. So go to modifier list and choose unwrap UVW. Okay, so down here, all the way down, or you can just type like UN, then you'll go straight to this. So click on Rep UVW, go to Open UV Editor and click it. And now, like UV, it's a system where it determines the texture coordinates. So looks like it, it fills up the whole thing. And uh, to flip it over, we just have to click this. Mirror vertically selected sub objects. There you go. All right. Even though the the text is you know like uh, the other way around, but that's okay. It doesn't affect our modeling results. So let's go ahead and click collapse. So we can officially start to model. Let me save the file. Okay, so based on this, you can see it's pretty much um, boxy. You know, like this looks like a rectangular box, just that uh, this part is a little bit curved up, and then this is rectangular. This is actually rectangular, and we can sort of extra this up, do the same here, and at the bottom part, it's a rectangular as well, but a bit of a chamfer, round edges on the side. And this is actually a box, like a rectangular box as well, with a tweak of vertices to make it more, you know, like a, a narrow at the bottom. Same goes to the other side. So let's go ahead and get started. So for, for the first thing that I'll do, I'll probably go with Extend the primitives, chamfer box, click F, just go to front, and we can drag according to here and push it. So, whatever I pushed it, it's actually pushing the box backwards and click and push again to get some, you know, like roundness over the edge because this is chamfer box. Left click, right click, done. Okay, so we have to follow the size from the front view, but on the side view, it's too short, it seems like. So from here, we can go to right view, and then we estimate it where, like, this is somewhere here. And go to chamfer uh, box uh, settings under modify, uh, modify panel. And we can increase the height to reach up to the front part of the sofa. Okay. Next, we're gonna use a simple uh, standard primitives box. Click this, go back to front view, and I'm gonna do something like this. Okay, but whenever I build it, I started to feel like, okay, my object is blocking the picture. So is there a way that I can see through and model accordingly? So I have a better guidance. So yes, there is one. So you can click alternate X, alt key plus X key to enable X-ray mode. So once you enable X-ray mode, you can see through. And we can probably click G to turn off the, the grid lines so that it's it's clearer so you won't get confused with that so i'm putting this back to 
x0. Okay, so now from here, I would like to go to site view. We do the same thing. Right click, go to right view. So this has to be here. Let's increase the height of that to the front part. Okay, so go back to front view. Let's convert it to editable poly. And we can click number one for vertex to entering the vertex mode. And vertex actually means these points that we, we see on the screen. So we can select those points and choose a scale. Select and uniform scale, the button here. Or you can click R for the shortcuts. And because we want to scale it down uh, from here, so it's actually best that we go to here and change to this selection center. Okay, so it works better. And uh, in this case, it still somehow works, okay? But sometimes if it doesn't work, you better change to this. Because this one shows two objects, two pivot point. So it, this one shows two objects, one pivot point. Okay, so that's the basic meaning of it. So now, once we scale it down, we can click number four, number four for polygon. And we can select that, select that. Go back to front and we hold shift key and drag to extrude. After that, let's use a scale again to scale it down, all the way down. So after you click scale, you just punch through, like move through the screen for a few times, dragging your mouse. Okay, then you can get it to flat. Okay, now let's scale it slightly further away so that it balances both. And you can see right now, we have to definitely switch to selection center. And we scale it up just a bit. That will do. All right. So now once we have this, okay, we can put it roughly there. And if you want a bit of curve right here, we can add one line through here. Okay. so. Let's go to H, select these, and choose Connect Settings. Okay, so with that Connect Settings, you can slide it over to somewhere here. Checked. Go back to Vertex and select these two vertices and scale it just to fit for, for the picture. So back to the view, it's looking pretty solid. Okay, but just that, like this is still kind of low poly. So we want to find a way to, to make it smoother, you know, like following the, the reference. So we can start by applying Turbo Smooth. So go to Modifier List and click Turbo. But whenever we click Turbo, the whole thing turns into like clay-ish round and uh, looks like toy it doesn't look good okay even though i like the curve but it doesn't really follow our reference so we need to start adding lines to make it looks better okay so first of all i'd like you to select horizontal line from here Okay, clicking alternate X to get back to X-ray mode and click connect and from the connect settings I'll change the two and right click this to put it back to the center and use the second option which is pinch pinch to separate and put it further to the other corner okay and same goes to here same goes to here, hold down control to add selection to that 
go, go back to connect and this time I'll just need one right click and I'll be using the slide option to slide it down okay so because the corner here it, it looks kind of sharper and just now whenever we click that reverse move it turns to super round okay super curvy super round like really flat kind of round so we need to add some lines to make this corner more solid whenever we activate it that turbo smooth okay so same goes to here this has to be flat in the front so we can use this H drag to select all the, the horizontal line from this view and we can go with connect and double line okay I think we'll just do a single line first for now pull it to here okay checked and let's have a look whenever we turn to uh, turbo smith okay so go to go back to modifier list add a turbo and you see it is slightly better comparing to here okay this is still looking round and like weird if I add the iterations to two you know what this is this is too round okay starting to get some flatness the part this is uh, doing like a pretty nice job right here at the corner so get rid of it so it's not enough yet actually so we make sure we double click and select that and pull it over and I think that uh, pink color it's it's kind of too bright we can't really see the, the wireframe so I'm gonna select these two I'm gonna go to material editor and I'm gonna drag a standard legacy and just right click assign material to selection so we put them to, to gray and also like I'm gonna change this to black and once I deselect, you can see those lines are in black color because we choose that, that to be black. Okay, so whenever you start molding an object, uh, it will actually load up all this color. But once you assign a material to it, it will sort of prioritize. Okay, that material color from here will, uh, dom will be dominant. Okay, it will take those colors rather than this. Okay, it will be replaced by those. Right, so we have this right now, and I wanted to add one more. Line through here, okay, that surrounds this whole thing by using inset. Okay, inset serves the functions of creating an outline for it. Okay, like a shell, like an outer border. So, checked and complete. Now let's turn on Turbo Smooth again. You can see we started to get things there. All right, but this one still seems too round, and then this one actually seems slightly flatter at the top. So if that's the case, we're gonna go to here and add some lines to it. Okay, so click a ring. Hold control, click the ring, click connect, right click and slide them up to make it closer to the top surface. So 3D works that way. So whenever you have more lines that closer to an H and once you add turbo, it will try to maintain its sharpness of the H. Okay, so I'm adding one line here. Now let's see what's the outcome. Turbo again. Okay, better, definitely better. All right, might be a little bit too flat. So, uh, we'll do it one more time. Okay, that's fine. See so if it doesn't work, that's fine. Like, I, I couldn't undo it. So, I'll need to move it down. But you see, if I move it down like this, it's sort of tweaking the shape, the original nice looking shape. So, I do not want that to happen. So there's a way to lock the line along these edges, the existing ones. So we go to here 
and click constraints edge. So constraints edge will lock these lines along those edges. Whenever you move, you won't affect the angle. Go back here and turn on turbo smooth. Yep, I think that's more like it. Okay, definitely. And next, let's go to side view again. Right click, go to right view and click alternate X. And I'm going to go to here, select vertex. You see, I, I wanted to push it back. Okay, but if I were to, you know, like do it. Okay, I have to turn, turn off this constraint first. So if I were to do it one by one, it's not gonna look good. You know, like this is this is manual work and it's gonna be, you know, like in out, in out, offset. So I have to select all of this and go to modifier list and click FF to go to FFD two by two. And this FFD, it's actually standing for a free form deformer. Okay, so it sort of simplifies whatever points, like how many points you have, like you have 100 points, 200 points, it simplifies into two segments, okay? Two segments from here, two segments from here, all right? So just go to here, control points, select those points at the top, and sort of move it. Okay, back to here. Okay, because it doesn't have a thickness. So that's why it's sort of having a hard time trying to move it. We can still move it. Okay, it does whenever it doesn't detect the, the thickness in it. So we have a bit of problem trying to move it. Okay, but that's okay. Like we, we can still move it after all. Right click, collapse all. Yes. Okay, so now it is time for us to get these to be straight as well, even after turbo. Okay, so we add lines through here, we add inset at the back as well. So I'm gonna isolate this and so that I can hide the rest of the picture temporarily. And just now we are using edge, you know, like ring and connect and you still need to adjust it from here. So it seems like more steps. So I'm gonna show you a new way on how to cut lines without so much steps. Okay, it's simplified. So you go to here, modeling. If you don't have this, you can go to customize, show UI, ribbon tools. Okay, so if I turn it off, it's gone. Customize, show UI, ribbon tools, it's, it's back on. Okay, so go to poly, go to here, swift loop. So click on swift loop, and whenever you point your mouse anywhere, it shows you like a preview of how it's going to be, be cut uh, in a green line. So I wanted to cut here, probably similar to the ones I have at the front. And I can right click once I'm done. So continue with this. Hold control to add selection. Click and set. Make it slightly uh, smaller. Checked. Okay, if you apply turbo again, yeah, this is what we got. All right. So, back to here, click the uh, icon and then go back to the normal mode. Now, we're gonna work on this big thing, the back side. So, go to box. Just click and drag to follow the rough size of it. And I'm clicking Alt X to, to see through. Maybe somewhere around here. Let's go to top view. T for top. So this is, should be following. Okay, later on we can use F50 to do that again. No worries. Just have to know like it's sort of roughly fitting there. Okay, so right now, you can see that from site view, so it's it's like this, ok, 
can go to right view and we can convert to editable poly and click vertex and click F3 oh, sorry uh, yeah F3 it's fine okay so just to check here and then we can select the solving and pull it back okay maybe slightly higher go to front okay so this this thing sort of clipping through and uh, if we want to follow the front picture and follow the, the side picture as well that means this is somewhat like a shape of starting from narrow and get extruded out and back okay so I'm gonna shrink this down like hold control scale press R to scale select all the points shrink it down so that it fits the current size of it and I'm gonna make sure this has to be in the center of the grid okay so once I got that maybe just slightly smaller Okay, once I got that, I will go to here, shift loop, and put one through here. Right click. Okay, so now I can just go to front view and select these points. Scale it just a bit up. Okay, make it wider. And after that, we make it wider as well following the, the style and go back to perspective by just rotating and click P and we can choose this choose that go back to front view and we can click extrude just like that okay the drawings isn't perfect okay but we we, we already put it in the middle so we know that this is going to be consistent on both sides checked okay there you go almost done all right okay turn it off let's reassign the gray color right click assign material to selection so now we have the remaining part of the bottom uh, this this panel thing so since it is round and the corners so I'll be using a chamfer box from Extended Primitives. So go to chamfer box, go to front, F for front. So I'm going to build this, like following this. I'm not too sure what's the black thing there, but uh, yeah, I'll probably skip that. Alternate X. Okay, sorry, one more time. Click and drag, pull it, left click, right click. That's weird. Okay, let me just try. Okay, I know what's going on. So, click, release your left mouse button, drag, click to confirm, and push again to set up the, the roundness of it in left click to final confirm and finished right click so click alternate x seems fitting quite well let's go to site view uh, should be right view not the left ones so pull it back just a bit increase the height all the way to here okay all right and uh, i put it overlap a bit into the the surface, the bottom of the chair, the couch. Now we come back to standard. So just draw accordingly. So not following the the angle, it's fine. We can tweak a little. Alt X. Okay. Next, let's go to side view. So somewhere around here. Now we can convert to editable poly. So select vertex by clicking number one and pull it over. Select this, pull it over. 
select this, pull it over, select this, pull it over. Go to front view by clicking F, select this, pull it over, select that, pull it over as well. Okay, click to turn off. Now, we have one completed. So we'll like to make the same, but in the opposite way. So I'll go to here and click mirror. And I can choose instance for just in case if I, I make changes on one thing and it will make changes to the rest as well. Okay. And let's move it manually to here and select these two this time. Go to side view, uh, right view, mirror. And again, I'm going to choose X because I want to duplicate like mirror to this side. So this horizontal side, it will be X. Okay, instance. We'll pull it over. Okay, I guess we're done. So we're just left with uh, like smoothing out the whole thing. So let's save it one more time. Okay, and then we can turn off our reference Okay, so this has a soft edge if I add a turbo and I want everything to be consistent. So I add it to double and then this naturally comes with the softness. Okay, because it's a chamfer box and I need a bit of chamfer applied to the leg as well. So I select one of it and you see it's highlighted in bold, uh, bold type. So whenever the text is bold, that means it is actually a clone. Okay, an instance clone. So let me prove to you like how this instance works. Select vertex, a change. The rest will change accordingly. See? Alright, so right now I want to make those corner slightly smoother by adding chamfer modifier. So go to here, chamfer, CHA. If you type CHA continuously, It'll go straight to chamfer and apply chamfer just like that. And you can add two segments to make it better. Click alternate X, alt X to bring the colors back. Okay, and this part. So if I turbo, it's gonna look ugly, I know it. <laughs> Alright, so no worries, we'll start adding lines. Okay, so we'll go to here and click ring, click connect, double line, pinch it, and closer to the edge somewhere here. Alright, and this part, we might add one more line. Select these two, click ring. Click connect, make sure not, not double. So if you put double, the lines will be too close to each other and it might be too sharp after turbo smooth. Okay, and also from here, ring, connect, double, and pinch it to somewhere here. So we, we're trying to, to form a close to square shape which follows this so everything has equal distance and do not forget about the bottom part so click isolate okay this is the one that we have to take care of as well so click connect push it to here all right and also right here we push it to here so we have all this extra H loops surrounds the corner. So whenever we add a turbo, it will try its best to maintain the shape. Okay, so it won't give you something weird. Go back to here. All right, so it's fitting uh, kind of nice. Okay, just a bit, which is not super accurate, but that's okay. Like for beginners, that's okay. So we don't have to be super accurate. I just need you guys to know the techniques. That's it. 
Okay, most importantly, you learn the techniques, you learn the workflow. So once you know about the basic techniques and workflow, then only you go for perfection. Okay. All right. There you go. So something left uh, left out is that if you turn this back on, so you will see that. Okay, let me make a clone of these two above here. I'm gonna choose copy, and you see this is this is curved up. Okay, ours is flat. So to curved up, I will be using F15. Okay, in order for us to use F15 to curve it up, we have to add more segments in the middle. So let's go ahead and add some. Okay, we can we can have that some segments here, and most importantly, these is what we need. Okay, uh, okay, about square. That looks good. All right. So now let's apply FFD. FFD. I think FFD four by four will be better. So four by four by four meaning. We split into four segments, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four on the thickness part. So go to front view, go to FFT, choose control points, select these, probably the, the first two, two row, like here in the middle, and bring it up just like that. Okay. All right, seems good. And once we're done, we can just right click and collapse all. Yes. And you can reconvert back to editable poly. I prefer to keep it in uh, poly rather than mesh. So go to site view, definitely, we'll have enough lines. Okay, but before turbo, we do not have enough lines in the middle. So we're gonna add some lines in the middle before the turbo smooth, smooth version. Select this, and just in general, adding a few, checked. Okay. All right. And on top of that, let's go with four for four again. Click control points. Go to top view, select these in the middle. Go to site view. Let's just pull pull this. Okay, I think I should exclude the ones from the top. And let's pull it from here. Not really. Okay, so I need more segments of F50. So if I need more, just go to box and you can set any numbers that you want. Okay, nope. So which one is the... Okay, it's not the width, sorry. Uh, should be the length, six. Okay, there you go. And from here, you can select that. Okay, still, I, I need same ones in the middle. So just put 666, okay. That'll be easier. All right, go to, go to side view, right view. And choose this, these, and pull it out. Okay, so the top part, maybe you want to make it curvy slightly. So it gives you full flexibility on how to tweak it. Okay, maybe this is this is too much. So let's select the column here and push it back just a bit. Okay, turn it off.
Okay, there you go. Looking solid. All right. And of course, I think there's a little bit of detail here. All right, in there. So we're gonna skip it this time. So we just uh, build the basic shapes. All right. So uh, lastly, we're gonna do a quick renders. So let's turn off all the reference from the list here. Select all, all of it. Go back to material editor. Right click assign. And I'm gonna create a simple plane. Let's go to top view. Drag. And I'm gonna make it slightly bigger. Okay, back to here. P for perspective. And assign material to selection. And we can make it slightly brighter. So we're gonna render an AO. So AO means ambient occlusion. Just go to here, choose light, and choose standard light, and go with skylight, click skylight, and turn on cast shadows. That's it, that's the lighting, okay? And we can get a nice angle from here, rotate. And go to here and check the size. So I want to render, uh, this is render setup. So I go to here and I change to a full HD size. And I'm just gonna click render. Okay, so this will take a while. Okay, finally, it's done. So hopefully you guys learned something today. And thank you so much. And if you like more contents like this in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel and put a like in the videos and turn the ring button so that you won't miss any new content in the future. And again, thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.